For long as Roblox has been around, new features have been added and removed. Today, I'm going to be covering an iceberg chart with over 70 removed Roblox features, going from most popular to obscure. Bloxy Awards, formerly Roblox Film Festival, Hall of Fame, and now the Innovation Awards, is a yearly event held on the Roblox platform. The Bloxy Awards is held to honor different artistic, creative, and social abilities of the platform, originally intended just for video creators and animators. The Bloxies have expanded to include artists, social media influencers, and game creators. Near the end of the year, the Roblox community can send in their votes for each category. Where for most categories, five final nominees are picked at a later date to finalize the voting process. The results are then streamed on platforms such as Twitch and YouTube. The first Bloxies that took place was the 2013 Hall of Fame and the Roblox Film Festival shown during the BloxCon 2013 event. During 2022, the Bloxies were replaced by the Innovation Awards. Unlike the Bloxy Awards, this version of the Bloxies is instead a in-person event that is held at the Roblox Developer Conferences. Builders Club used to be an old membership players could buy starting out as a beta testing feature on April 12, 2007, and then came to the public on April 16. Then in June of 2009 and later, October, two other tiers were added, Turbo Builders Club, TBC, and Outrageous Builders Club, OBC. At first, OBC had its own purchase page before being merged in October. After purchasing Builders Club, the user would receive different benefits depending on what tier you bought such as daily robots, join more groups, BC only places, membership badges, sell items, trade, exclusive items, and if you had OBC, you were able to enter the DevX program and earn real life money from converting your Robux into real life change. Builders Club was replaced by the modern Roblox Premium on, on September 23rd, 2019. From 2003 to 2005, the first stats were first square, and then they looked popped out instead of flat. Then from 2006 to 2009, we got the classic stats we all miss. These studs became no longer popped out and said used textures on the block. The studs became circle studs, similar to Lego. Then from 2009 to 2013, studs became square and after 2009, they got the letter R for Roblox on them, this being a pretty iconic version of them. Then from 2013 to 2015, studs became more refined with better shading and the R logo had become more popped than ever before. In January 2017, the R logo was changed to have the modern Roblox logo on the block. After March though, the logo becomes removed from it and this is what remains on Roblox to this day. Contrary to popular belief, Roblox is not sued by the LEGO company for circle stuff. The LEGO company does not have a patent on the LEGO brand. Icon seems to be an almost annual event to celebrate the Easter holiday. It started off fairly simple as in April 2008, eggs would rain down from the sky in every Roblox game. This once again happened in 2010, and then in 2012 the event changed how it worked. Instead of eggs dropping from the sky, Instead, Roblox made it so that every egg for the egg hunt for the year could be obtained from a single hosted game on the Roblox platform, where users had to do certain tasks to earn each different egg. In 2020, the egg hunt was something different. Instead of one single game hosting all the eggs in one game, instead, it would be more like a hub for different portals, for a user to go to different individual games made by user-generated games instead of Roblox games. And during the event, there was an egg called the Tiny Egg of Non-Existence. The egg was originally created to be a troll by Telmon during the 2008 egg hunt. This egg being a troll item made it impossible to obtain in the 2008 egg hunt. Now, this egg was the last egg released by Roblox, as in the 2020 egg hunt being the final egg obtained in the event, but the way we know this was the last egg to ever be released by Roblox. This is because if you look at the description of the badge for the tiny egg of non-existence in the event game, it states goodbye, essentially saying that there will be no more future egg hunts hosted by Roblox. The guess was a feature intended for newcomers to test Roblox, and this certainly worked as because this feature is what made me discover Roblox in 2012, and I just remember being enamored by the charm of Roblox so early into my childhood. I was so happy getting to experience Roblox on my parents' 2007 old laptop where I had to wait 20 minutes to play Roblox because of how old the laptop was. So this feature holds very dear to my heart. The guests were introduced in September 26, 2008. The functionality of the guests was very limited as all you could do was play games and look around on the website. For heck's sake, you can't even chat to other users on Roblox. The guest appearance was based on what the Roblox account was currently wearing at the time. And in 2012, this is what the Roblox account was wearing. Guests were removed on October 2nd, 2017. But I didn't care. I continued to wear the guest avatar on Roblox because it reminds me of me 
during that simple time in my life back then. Luabu, also known as Roblox China, was a mainland China version of Roblox. Luabu was released on a mobile app for iOS and Android on July 13th, 2021. A Chinese version of Roblox Studio was made downloadable before this. Roblox Chinese website explained that the release of the platform would focus heavily on collaborations with schools and educators, and it was a tutored as a potential educational tool for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM students. Roblox owns an account on Billy Billy, a Chinese video sharing website similar to YouTube. Development live streams and contests are hosted on an account. Chinese Roblox players get a username formatted as Robloxian followed by nine random lowercase letters and numbers as seen in various videos featured on, on the Lobu platform. Robux are unable to be spent in the avatar shop. As such, Robux on Lobu can only be used to purchase passes and developer products. Around July 21st, 2021, non-Lobu users that logged into the Lobu QQ Studio Lobu editor within a few before weeks had their accounts converted into hybrid Roblox Lobu accounts. This voided all their Robux, disabling adding friends and preventing them from joining group. On July 22nd, 2021, or July 29th, Roblox blocked all ch non-China IPs from logging into Luabu or Luabu QQ Studio, Luabu Editor, preventing any further accounts from being affected. A few weeks later, all affected accounts were reverted into normal accounts and their Robux restored. On December 8th, 2021, Lubu was shut down indefinitely. A post was made on the Lubu website announcing this, thanking players for helping test and stating that the product will continue to be optimized for the time being. On July 17th, 2022, Roblox reportedly terminated all over 5 million Lubu accounts. This potentially showed that Roblox either gave up on the project, on which much time had been spent, or they had other plans for Lubu. However, since April 20th, 2023, they began uploading on Billy Billy, almost nine months after the mass deletion of the Lubu accounts, with their latest upload being from November 1st, 2023. Skateboard gears are a vehicle type gear item that was first introduced in late February 2010. All variants are based on real life skateboards. The release of the skateboard triggered a series of building contests that were ongoing until a later time. Many of the contests were sponsored by Disney. Seven out of the 33 skateboards were released for the Zeke and Luther event, two being freebies and others being prizes. There are also skateboards for each type of BC, being three for BC, TBC, and OBC. Two out of the 33 skateboards are Roblox toy code items, which are still available. And skateboards work just like vehicles, except with a few changes to make it look like and feel like you were skateboarding. Experimental body animation frames were used to make it look like you were skateboarding. There were a few problems with you falling over on your side and getting stuck. This could have been fixed by adding a unflip tool or GUI. To dismount, the player could have pressed backspace or the escape key before 2011. Over time, these skateboards had their functions broken and were considered useless by many players. Players have criticized Roblox for removing skateboards rather than updating them. After the deprecation of skateboard platform, Many users criticized that the boards were extremely hard to turn, as the handling was outdated from the deprecated coding still in the gear. Many users also criticized the fact that you were unable to get off a skateboard anymore, unless using glitches, using a sit tool, or resetting. During September 16th to 17th, 2019, and then on October 10th, 2019, all of the skateboards were taken off sale. A possible reason for this is that many, if not all, of the skateboards were considered broken by players, as their functions were broken due to modern updates. The limited skateboards were also taken off sale, but are still purchasable and resellable. The Roblox forums were used for discussing and socializing with other people in a text-based format. The forums housed different subforums that each had their own purposes. The forums were introduced on July 12, 2004, and were closed on December 4, 2017, after a post by an admin account announced their eventual removal, which happened a week later on December 11th. In the 13 and a half year lifespan of the forums, many users made posts and participated in the subcultures of each subforum, and the forums were often a site of much controversy and rating, especially in their later years. A ticket, also known as Tix for short, was a former Roblox currency alongside with Robux. Introduced on August 2nd, 2007, Tickets were earned by players through various methods, including visiting the site daily and having other users visit their place. Tickets could be spent on items in the avatar shop and advertisements. 
Tickets were mainly used to buy things from the Avatar shop. At the same time, tickets also did not require payment, and any registered account could earn them. Tickets could also be converted into Robux to the Roblox system, and vice versa. The value of tickets varied, but the tickets were worth far less than Robux. On April 14, 2016, ticks was removed by Roblox, and any remaining balances were forfeited to make Robux the only currency. There are methods available to view a user's ticks balance through web APIs after removal, although these methods no longer work. <coughs> it's a sound that plays when a character resets or breaks in game. It also plays as a sound test when the player changes the volume bar in the settings tab. When the original sound is viewed using the sound's metadata from pre-2013 clients, it will show that the audio was created on September 18th, 1999 using SoundForge 4.5 and was originally created by Joey Carras. The original sound was first used in a computer game named Messiah. The original Roblox death sound is also a meme throughout and outside of the Roblox community. The usage of this meme refers to the ridiculous nature of its sound. <coughs> there have also been instances of people making music or remixes or even censoring swear words using the audio file. In some instances, the big head and bigger head are associated with original death sound. When adjusting the volume in the Roblox application in game, the game will trigger the Roblox death sound based on the volume that the player is set. This is used to indicate how loud or soft the volume is to the player which will help the player better adjust the volume based on the game's sound. The feature was added in early 2017 after the spread of the meme in 2016. This audio file called KidsSingOuch.mp3 was left in the files until mid-2017 and might have been planned to be the first death sound for Roblox, though it is unconfirmed. In 2019, Roblox became involved in a copyright dispute with the death sound's copyright holder, Tommy Tolerico. Terrico claimed that Roblox had obtained a sound effect from an illegal sound effect website and were using it without his permission. In response, Roblox said that David Bazooki and Eric Castle got the sound from a stock licensed sound CD-ROM they purchased when they were developing the platform, not an illegal website like Tolerico had suggested. In late 2020, an agreement between Tolerico and Roblox was reached. On July 26, 2020, the Roblox Twitter account announced that the sound would be updated later that day. Around an hour after the post, the sound was updated to a <coughs> sound. It has been a year since the OG death sound has been replaced. How do you guys feel? Do you guys still miss the old sound, or are you guys getting used to the new one? Let me know in the comments down below. The Blockster Badge was a badge released on December 22nd, 2006, and was awarded to players who reached at least 250 knockouts and more knockouts than wipeouts. On October 14, 2014, the badge icon was updated to a more modern look. description of the badge reads, Anyone who has earned this badge is a very dangerous player indeed. These Robloxians who excel at combat can one day hope to achieve this honor. A Bloxer badge is given to the warrior who has blocked at least 250 enemies on July 10, 2015, the badge was retired along with the combat initiation and warrior badges because the features built on became outdated, and people were abusing places to get free KOs and WOs. The Builders Club badge was a Roblox badge that was rewarded to players who had an active Builders Club membership. It showed the Builders Club hard hat next to a blueprint and a set square. The description of the badge reads, Members of the Justrious Builders Club displays the Builders Club is a paid premium service. Members receive several benefits. They get 10 places on their account instead of one, they earn a daily income of 15 Robux, and they can sell their creations to others in the Robux catalog. They get the ability to browse the website without external ads. The ad. Builders Club membership badge is no longer obtainable due to the membership being succeeded by Roblox Premium. A knockout, abbreviated as KO or KOs, is when a player destroys another player's character by bringing their health bar to zero. Some games contain weapons or gears, which are used to battle other players. For example, swords are usually found in sword fighting games, with knockouts usually being the main objective. Sometimes a player can knock out another player even if they themselves have been knocked out. 
This can happen due to lag, or the user's weapon may be able to harm players, even if the user's character is dead. For example, a rocket launcher's rockets can knock out other players, even if the user is players dead. Players use their own gear items to kill others in many places that allowed gear, considered as griefing, which eventually led to the retirement of the combat initiation warrior and blocks or badges. Knockouts no longer exist as a record of stat on Roblox, as they were removed on July 8th, 2015. All three badges associated with knockouts have been discontinued, but users that previously obtained the badges will still have them shown on their profile. The Outrageous Builders Club badge was a Roblox badge awarded to players who had Outrageous Builders Club. It showed the Outrageous Builders Club hard hat in front of an atom looking symbol. Player points for a scoring system on Roblox, generally intended to display players' skill. Player points were first implemented to Roblox as a beta feature on April 15, 2014, and were released out of beta when they were reset in September 2014. They are often represented as red coins with white stars at the center of their side. Players could earn them while playing certain games, either by completing tasks or making progress. Compared to two main currencies in Roblox since the feature's beta release, Robux and Ticket player points could not be used to buy items in the catalog or any other place besides this game, meaning they were not a form of currency. Initially, a, as a limited supply, players were able to accumulate player points in games and rank up into the website's leaderboards, in which it displayed the ranking of players with the most player points accumulated on Roblox. An overhaul of the system is being worked on by Roblox, according to a staff member, although this may have been cancelled as there have been no updates on the overhaul system since January 2018. On May 4th, 2023, a dev forum post was made announcing the retirement of player points on June 30th, 2023. Developers have until May 31st to migrate legacy player points from their game. Sets were groups of models or decals that were created by players on Roblox. These sets could be subscribed to, allowing players to easily find needed models in one easy to find location. Sets were located under the develop page. On this page, you could have seen your sets and subscribe sets. To delete a set, click on Delete this set. You must have an image for it to formally search for sets. Go to subscribe sets and click find set. There is no set ID 1, the first being 2. Sets ID 2 and 3 and 4 were all owned by Roblox. Although sets were discontinued, the insert tool was still able to load up all of the sets you previously were subscribed to, as shown below. As of July 9th, 2022, this is no longer possible. The Turbo Builders Club badge was a Roblox badge awarded to those who purchased Turbo's Builders Club. It showed the Turbo's Builders Club hard hat next to a wrench and a drill. Here is a description of the badge. Members of the exclusive Turbo's Builders Club are some of the most dedicated Roblox teams. The Turbo Builders Club is a paid premium service. Members receive many of the benefits received in regular Builders Club. In addition to a few more exclusive upgrades, they can earn a daily income of 35 Robux, they can sell their creations to others in the Roblox catalog, they get the ability to browse the website without My a feed is a feature on Roblox, created on July 30th, 2009. Players can receive updates on their status, such as latest shouts from groups they were in, receive updates from games if they were following them, as well as receive status updates from users on their friends list. From November 2021 onward, you can no longer post on your feed, although you could still visit the page. The only way to use this feature was to post on the group shout. It was announced on a dev forum post on January 18th, 2022, that they would be removing my feed. Visors are a series of classic hats that either were made for a year or a celebration such as the year 2007 or Halloween. Their original prices were usually cheap and some are high. Roblox visors are seen by some as collectible. The 2007 to 2010 visors descriptions always mentioned on the ongoing worldwide problem, such as global warming. However, the last visor to include this type of reference was the 2013 visor. The annual yearly visor series ended with the 2019 Roblox visor. The ending of the series was criticized by many users, saying that they should have kept continuing the series. The Ambassador program acted as a Roblox referral system members to gain more tickets. The program was released on April 22, 2009. Players were required to link Roblox via other websites, and each link would award all players two tickets per domain. With three active links, the Ambassador badge would be given. 
A cap was set at 50 links for all players to prevent abuse of the system. In 2009, a well-connected gift of Link Master, which could also be purchased for 400 Robux or 4,000 tickets on the Avatar Shop, was given to users who were in the Ambassador Program. On March 6, 2012, Roblox announced that the Ambassador Program was discontinued, and in 2014, Roblox admin Gordon Rocks 24 announced that the Ambassador Badge would be deleted and removed from all profiles. A decision that was met by heavy criticism from the Roblox community. BC exclusive items are items that could only be bought by people with Builders Club. However, unlike BC only places, Turbo Builders Club and Outrageous Builders Club have their own exclusive items as well. With the more expensive memberships, such as Turbo Builders Club and Outrageous Builders Club, users with those memberships could purchase the premium content from the lesser membership. Most packages as well as a few hats and gears are premium items. Players who have once earned a premium item but the subscription for any type of Builders Club ended would still let them keep that very premium item. They were removed at the end of April 2019. The Combat Initiation Badge's description reads, this badge is given to any player who has proven his or her combat abilities by accumulating 10 victories in battle. Players who have this badge are not complete new. The Combat Initiation Badge was a badge obtainable by getting 10 knockouts on a game which used the classic Roblox leaderboard script. It was one of the easiest badges to obtain as a user on Roblox. On July 10th, 2015, this badge was retired along with the Warrior and Blogster badges due to it being built on an outdated feature and people were using places that give knockouts to players. Players who had it can keep the badge, but it is no longer obtainable. If we calculate only 2.87% of accounts on Roblox as of November 7th, 2021, could have the ability to achieve this badge before it was retired. Gift accessories are a type of accessory that rewarded owners of a gift with another accessory. Gifts were usually given to players when they completed a specified task within a limited amount of time, such as accumulating over a thousand place visits. These tasks were not disclosed to the players, which often led to players creating theories about how certain gifts were earned. After a certain amount of time, players who had not earned the gift could purchase it for Robux. Once the sale period ended, the gift opened. Any player who owned the gift at the time it opened would receive a specified price. Typically, gifts that were more difficult to obtain were priced higher and released more desirable gifts, such as a dominance. Now, new gifts have been released since 2017 and it's assumed that gifts have been discontinued. Let's Make a Deal, often abbreviated as LMAD, was a Roblox subforum dedicated to discussing trades and making deals with other users. LMAD had over 37 million total posts and around 5.6 million threads. That made the most popular forum on Roblox. Let's Make a Deal was located under the Clubhouse's category on the Roblox forums. Like the Clans and Guilds forum, Elmad received a heavy amount of criticism because of the fact that a large portion of its threads was off topic. The main purpose of Elmad was to try and buy and sell limited and limited U items for the best prices possible. And let's make a deal players often use to barter and negotiate trades and the prices of limited and limited U items. After deals were negotiated, players used the trade system to buy and sell the items. Another large item of discussion on Let's Make a Deal was players setting values for many items, both new and old. Many non-limited deals also took place in LMAD, including group selling and exchanges between items slash robux and real life money, despite being against the rules. Understanding LMAD jargon can be difficult for those unfamiliar with a subforum. A list was published by Reese McBlox listing common terms and abbreviations, but was later moved on account of being outdated. Some of these terms are LPP, lowest price possible, OP, overpay, rare, a limited item that has a very small amount of copies in circulation, etc. There is a let's make a deal salesman toy that is based on one of the older outfits of the richest Roblox player from the LMAD forums. Link 199 used to work. Let's make a deal was seen as a driving force behind the trading economy while it was around. However, many users and non-users alike often found it to be quite a toxic community. There was usually some sort of drama between users that was also made public business due to the users posting about their dislike for each other in LMAD, which also turned people away from the sub forum. LMAD would disappear the same day the forums did. Outlines were black, pixel-shaded edges that appear on the edges of parts. In August 2013, it was announced on the Roblox blog that outlines would have an option to be disabled. Setting the outlines property of lightning to false, which disables all outlines in a place, setting the surface type on one of a part's surface to smooth no outline, 
which disables outlines on the four edges adjacent to the specified surface. On June 12, 2019, it was announced on the developer forum that outlines would be deprecated, and on July 1, 2019, they were fully deprecated. As of May 19, 2020, outlines have been removed. The Warrior Badge is a Roblox badge given to players who had at least 100 knockouts. On July 10, 2015, the Warrior Badge, as well as the Combat Initiation and Blockster Badges, were retired due to the feature it being built on was outdated, and that people were using places to rank up on KOs and WOs. If we calculate only 2.87% of accounts on Roblox as of November 7, 2021, could have the ability to achieve this badge before it was retired. Thirteen plus items in the Avatar Shop could have only been purchased by players who registered their accounts with a birth date that has their age at thirteen or older. They were identified as a grey tag and could have not been put up for resale or trade. There were eight thirteen plus items. The seven being betrayals of real world guns. These being the Luger Pistol, M1 Grand, Historic Timmy Gun, Trench Warfare Shotgun, the General's 45, Mauser 96, Sten Gun, and the Ruby Horde, the Rapscallius Treasure, which was a part of the bundle that could have been obtained by a $40 Roblox gift card on June 1st, 2013. Then later it was on sale in 2015 from the Memorial Day sale from that same year for 300 Robux. The feature was removed altogether on July 3rd, 2020, making all former 13 plus items able to be purchased by users with a birth date under 13. Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, also known as SSAO or Ambient Shadows, was a Roblox feature released on January 28th, 2011. Along with the updated graphics, Roblox would automatically turn off this feature if it detects a user receiving less than 30 FPS because of the shadows. It could be prevented by turning off by setting quality level to level 21, setting anti-aliasing to off, and not using OpenGL. It's believed that when dynamic lighting was released, ambient shadows were removed to encourage people to use a new lighting system. As of our as of December 19, 2020, there is no confirmation on why ambient shadows were removed. Around January 9, 2021, Roblox implemented HBAO, Horizon Based Ambient Occlusion, to make the render look better, as it is an improvement to SSAO. However, for a few weeks, it was disabled due to various bugs. Later, on January 29, 2021, it was re-implemented after fixing them. Build Mode is a removed feature in Roblox in which players could use stamper tools to build a game. Instead of making the game in Roblox Studio then testing it when it was done, players were able to build a game as they were playing the game. The tools used were exactly the same tools used in Welcome to Roblox Building, a game made by Roblox. Players used this mode as a fast and easy way to make games without scripts and free models. Starting in December 2010, users could click on the tool button in the bottom left corner of the screen to open a panel that would allow them to equip and unequip build tools. During its lifespan, build mode was criticized for not allowing much freedom for editing a game and for causing a rush of poorly built games. Due to the said criticisms, most people steered away from In build late mode. December 2016, build mode was quietly removed. Unlike most removed features, the removal was unannounced on the Roblox blog and Roblox's social media account. The Builders Club beta features were features of Roblox that were open to the public testing for members of Builders Club. Builders Club beta features were responsible for Builders Club members testing features such as body meshes, personal servers, mega places, group building were a part of EC beta features and were discontinued as each feature became accessible to all users. Some were discontinued and replaced with new all-user features, and others are now available for any player to use. Most BC beta features were removed in 2011, the last being the personal server in 2016. Personal servers were first introduced by NJ, Ostracized, and Gen2 Integri at the 2011 Roblox Rally. The feature was fully released on November 2nd of 2011. Initially, personal servers had their own tab besides regular experiences on the front page. Because personal servers had a player limit of 50, this helped to allow them to have exposure. Roblox later removed this tab sometime in 2013, greatly reducing the flow of new players to personal servers. Personal servers were a type of experience on Roblox in which players could build and have the experience automatically save progress periodically. Unlike regular experiences, they were allowed to only have one server running. A default building tools given that builders were the stamper tool and its associated complements. Roblox describes a personal server as like a game plays, 
but it never closes. Unlike a regular experience that has its server closed when all players leave, a personal server never closed. Therefore, the personal server never reverted to the way it was before users started playing it. This created the opportunity for personal servers to be used as collaborative building projects. Personal servers could be changed back to a regular experience and vice versa. The owner and administrators could assign access levels to specific users via clicking the player's name on the leaderboard. These access levels dictated what permissions that player had i.e. what the player could and could not do with the, within the personal server. Large communities formed in many personal servers. They sometimes created a Roblox group to further assign and divide the permissions of players. There were a multitude of popular genres. Building servers were common. There were two distinct types of building servers. Free builds were servers that allowed everyone to build anything they wanted. It was a way to allow players without Builders Club to experience unrestricted personal server style building. There were also servers that had specified objectives in their builds, be it a city or a building. Experiences in which visitors did not build were also popular. Examples would be roleplay such as town, school, and others. Businesses such as airlines, hotels, and theme parks, obstacle courses, tournaments such as races or sword fights. Mini games such as musical chairs and many Even others. Even though many builds utilize custom building tools, Snapper Tool Persists were also present. They built exclusively or almost exclusively using a Snapper Tool, embracing its simple functionality and aesthetic. Around 2010 to 2012, there'd be personal servers with a blue wall saying, This personal build server has not been configured. Positioned to be the thumbnail, this was the type of starter place that utilized a configurable terrain editor. If you joined an experience with that, with that thumbnail, you would spawn in a clear box with just sky around you and a message saying, Welcome to your new personal server. Please configure your terrain below. An issue with personal servers was griefing. This often occurred in personal servers in which building rights were handed out too freely. Griefers would sabotage a place through means such as flooding the map with water or blowing it up using C4 or explosive gear. However, this was easily remedied. All that was needed was to simply remove the building rights of the known griefer to prevent further damage from the individual and revert to an earlier version before the griefing to completely restore the map to its previous form. Personal servers are often claimed to be a useless feature. Those of that opinion often say that many types of experiences popular in personal servers could be done in normal places, such as quiz experiences, RP experiences, and minigame experiences. This argument overlooked several things. While these experiences could also be created in regular experience, personal servers provided a simple and easy way for a host to manually operate the experience. In contrast, regular experiences generally automated the processes using scripts, which was not nearly as easy to implement. In addition, host interaction is often a desired thing, not a compromise. Another argument was that the personal servers were a poor collaborative development tool. This ignores the fact that the majority of personal servers are games in of themselves. The stamper tools that came with personal servers were also prone to develop bugs over time. These issues were completely ignored by Roblox who most likely wanted to de-emphasize the personal server feature and emphasize normal places in accordance with their goal to shift experiences in a different direction. On April 13th, 2016, personal servers were announced to be soon replaced with team create on the Roblox blog. The option to create new personal servers was soon disabled. Personal servers were removed and converted to regular experiences on June 8th, 2016, according to a message from Roblox and on the forums. On October 27th, 2016, build mode was also removed, disallowing the creators from continuing their builds personally. Play Solo was a feature in which a player could access a place and edit it in a single player mode, unable to play with any other people in the mode. When this mode existed, owners of games could always play in this mode in their own games, however the Play Solo feature would not be available to the public unless said place was uncopyloped. It was similar to build mode, you could save your work as a model if you liked it. The logo continued to evolve over time when the mode still existed. The most iconic logo features a green rounded rectangle button with a dark green letters featuring Play Solo, with a user looking similar to the classic look of a builder man, but with a different hat. The last logo was just light green letters saying Play Solo. Another term for Play Solo mode is Offline mode, as noted when your mouse hovered over the very last Play Solo button. Play Solo was removed sometime in 2014 or 2015. Rental items were items that had a set expiration date. They were introduced on June 3rd, 2009. Mini gears did have expiration times. 
not limited to gears, but other catalog items. Some sponsored items such as the Flintstones car and the Amazing Spider-Man are rental items. They had four-week and two-week rentals, respectively. On June 25th, 2019 and March 2021, many of the currently on-sale rental items were either changed to be bought normally or taken off sale. The rental detail and items does not appear on off-sale ones. Rental items were discontinued because of the majority mm -hmm. community dislike on this feature and for the simplification of the website. The Stamper tool is a tool that was introduced in late 2010. It was primarily used in Roblox Studio, Welcome to Roblox Building, and Personal Service. The tool inserted models and decals from either the user's items or predefined sets created by Roblox. It was first tested in Roblox Studio and Welcome to Roblox Building, and was later released in Build Mode and Personal Servers. Roblox deprecated this tool and building method along with the deprecation of Insert Service, which had the ability to insert models via the client in October 2017. On the Roblox website, you were able to create a party in an online chat. This feature allowed users to join games together. If the party leader and the one who created the party joined a game, everyone in that party would be forced to join their game and server with them. On Xbox One, users in the same Xbox Live party with Roblox Open would join the game of the party. If someone left and joined the new game, the entire party would follow them. This led to a lot of frustration because as people were playing a game, if someone else joined a different one, they were automatically moved without warning. On June 22nd of 2011, it was announced that this feature was going to come to Roblox in a blog post written by Reese Mechablox. Parties were typically used in, a fr in friend groups to join the same game together. If the party leader joined the game, Roblox would automatically found a server that fitted anyone. This allowed users to guarantee to be able to play with one another. Players were only allowed to be in one party at a time. Joining a party in a different chat whilst being in a party had you leave the previous one. As of October 7th, 2022, if you have no friends, the chat tab description still mentions partying. Make friends to start chatting and partying. In 2015, this feature was overhauled and was no longer available to people not on your friends list. As of 2019, this feature was removed to modernize the site but ended up making the community upset. Recently, there has been speculation that parties are returning as squads as seen in the client files. The laser was a tool introduced on an unknown date in 2006. It was a preset, Hopper bin, and is a variant of the delete tool. It was able to quickly delete any part that is not locked and can be fired at an extremely quick rate. This item along with the flamethrower is one of the only official Roblox tools to not make it far in its life. With its use heavily declining after 2008, it was later removed. <laughs> Reminder, similar to a warning, the user's account is disabled and can be reopened immediately by agreeing to the terms of service. Unlike a warning, this was given to new users or very mild violations. It appears to have been dropped due to its redundancy and all reminder offenses were merged with the warning offenses. Bevels are a partially discontinued graphical Roblox feature which rendered smooth 45 degree edges on meshless parts. They were a prominent graphical element contributing to Roblox's aesthetic over a period of five years. Bevels were introduced to the Roblox client on October 30th, 2007. Similar to many of Roblox's graphical elements at the time, they were automatically enabled or disabled by default depending on the user's graphics card. However, they could be manually set in the studio settings in addition to optional anti-aliasing. Bevels were historically responsible for the same remnant edges as seen on the R6 Roblox character, with no distinction being made from the character limbs and other parts in the world. However, after they were disabled on parts, code was re retained for the limbs in order to preserve the existing character style. As such, they continue to have a limited presence on Roblox and may not be considered entirely deprecated. In early 2013, Roblox began undergoing a gradual shift towards a more modern visual aesthetic. As a result, part bevels were removed on April 4th, 2013, ultimately being replaced by outlines, which would later be deprecated as well. In a Roblox blog posted by Jim Locker, the following reasons were stated. We've turned off bevels, they hurt performance, and don't fit our vision for the future look of Roblox and shift new rendering code that improves performance, particularly in the context of rendering static environments on slow and or dated hardware. Gemlocker. Builders Club Only Places, commonly known as BC Only Places, was a feature added on December 30th, 2010. It allowed Builders Club members, members of Builders Club, Cerebral Builders Club, and Outrageous Builders Club to make their place available only to members with a premium membership. In other words, 
Users that aren't subscribed to Builders Club were unable to access these places. If a user would search for a BC game, EX Sandbox BC, they will see a BC hard hat icon at the corner, which means that the place is BC only. Popular BC only places were shown at the top of the game page. These places were added for BC members only in both online and solo mode. These places would pay the place owner 10 tickets rather than giving one ticket for every visit. In the forums, Reasonic Blocks told users to make another place for non-Builders Club members. If a user was not in Builders Club and attempted to join a BC only place, a message would pop up saying, You need Builders Club for this. Builders Club membership is required to play in this place. It was common for BC only places to have a similar or identical non-BC place. In June 2015, the BC only places section on the games page was removed. Shortly after, Shedleski announced the reason being they made no profit from them. The reason was that the owners of BC places had a non-builders club copy, so people would just play the all members place, thereby maximizing the owner's profit. The feature was poorly received because of the way Adam spoke about non-builder club players an issue causing mass protests of the future by non-premium players. Ironically, many turbo slash outrageous builder club members also protested about the feature, even with a few noteworthy protests by OBC Sickmaster Luke regarding the issue. The whole issue created hundreds of pages of discussion in the Roblox forum. The first night after the release, Mr. Doombringer banned some users who were protesting the feature. Many protests of a new feature called PC Only Games Gym Blocks and Segregation at its finest. By the end of October 2017, the feature was discontinued, which made all Builder Club only places available to all players. To Open up the possibility of gaining and retaining more users along with earning more revenue, according to Night Gallade ID. Data persistence was a method for saving data from one game session to another. Due to the player and play specified nature of data saving using data persistence, players were required to be in game to load or save their data, and data could not be loaded or saved across multiple places in the same universe. On July 14, 2016, in Roblox version 252, July 2016, all data persistent features were remarked as deprecated or discontinued. Though their usage had already been discouraged before then, after some people lost their data playing games that used data persistence between May 28th and May 29th, 2014. As of May 2021, that data persistence has been disabled in all games. For new work, data stores should be used instead. Live Ops, also referred to as developer events, was a Roblox system which had replaced the events feature. It aimed to better spotlight games by upcoming and established developers by featuring a few games on a splash page each day. This system did not provide avatar shop prizes, as developers were recommended to make their own in-game prizes for users who participated. Live ops were intended to begin on May 13, 2019, but were delayed until May 16th, three days after EggCon 2019 scrambled in time ended. The live op system had been heavily criticized for its lack of catalog prizes. Users argued that this defeated the purpose for both developers and the players to participate in live ops, as the games should have provided catalog prizes instead of in-game rewards to allow greater customization for free-to-play users, particularly those who desire Robux but are unable to purchase Although it. there are still promotions which have items available in the Avatar Shop, e.g. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Users also have argued that this system ended traditions such as Egg Hunts, Hollow Eve, Christmas, Kid Choice Awards, Roblox Winter Games, and other seasonal events. On November 13th, 2019, it was announced that Live Ops would be put on hold till November 21st, 2019, as the system was being re-evaluated. It was expected to come back sometime in 2020, but that exact date has since been overdue. Currently, it is unknown if Live Ops has been discontinued or is still being re-evaluated by Roblox. Mega places were games whose servers could hold up to 50 players or more with a reduced amount of lag than normal due to increased capabilities of computation power with additional players. Mega places used more of Roblox's server resources and were only allowed to be created by Builders Club DC members. Mega places were officially released in August 2011 after several periods of testing with 100 players on Roblox's game testing sites. Groups often made their places mega as they could hold a lot more members of the group than a standard server. Mega places were removed sometime in 2014, most likely July 28th. After this happened, all users were able to make places that could hold up to 50 players. Sometime in 2019, all players' max player count was raised to 100. 
As of April 12, 2021, all the users can put the max player's count per server to 100. All developer forum members may set the maximum player count to 700. Clans are groups of people that could compete for the top spot on a game's leaderboard. They got to the top spot by earning player points from that game. The total player points from each person in the clan were added up to determine their spot. It was announced on April 22nd of 2014 that creating a clan required a group. 500 Robux and Builders Club. To invite someone to a clan, the person that that owner wanted to invite must have been in a group associated with the clan. Up to 100 group members could be in the clan at one time. On December 12th, 2018, the removal of clans was privately announced. Kelsey on a dev forum post. Now that the leaderboards and player points have been sunsetted, clans are no longer a meaningful part of the Roblox group's experience. Over the next few months, we will be sunsetting clans to completely simplify the user experience. All users who purchase a clan will be refunded when removed. On January 23rd, 2019, clans On are January 23rd, 2019, clans were officially removed. A super moderator was a type of moderator that specialized in all areas of moderation on Roblox. They were also known as head moderators. They had more power over other moderators, being able to control the forum, accept slash deny assets, and moderate around the website. When all of the moderator badges were removed, image moderator, forum moderator, super moderator, the privileges may have been removed from the players who had it. It is currently unknown what happened exactly until a former SM tells the community. Some of the SMs were made into administrators and others were completely demoted. There is no player with a super moderator badge currently on Roblox since this rank has been removed. Wipeouts, abbreviated as WO or, or WOES, is a feature that is used to count how many times when a player kills you. This feature is mainly used in Tycoon and Brick Battle games. The wipeout stat increase depending on what happens to your character's health bar when it hits zero. For example, let's say there are two players named Player 1 and Player 2. Player 1 gets destroyed by Player 2 with a sword. Player 1's wipeouts will increase by 1 since their character's health bar dropped to 0, while Player 2's knockouts will increase by 1. On July 8, 2015, wipeouts were removed. Wipeouts no longer exist as a recorded stat on Roblox. Throughout the month of December, the Roblox staff team placed mystery gift boxes in Avatar Shop and awarded them to players who either met certain criteria or had the wit to crack the riddle they contained. Eventually, they opened and revealed a new addition to the player's inventory. The forum purge was given to some accounts in certain situations where all of that account's forum posts from the Roblox forums would suddenly become deleted. The Accelerator program was a professional development program that offered developers an opportunity to work with Roblox producers to develop and release an original game. The program would last 12 weeks. The Accelerator program was ended in fall of 2022. As of August 10th, 2023, there are 358 known former Accelerators. Clans and Guilds was a forum section on the Roblox forums created to discuss the group's feature. Clans and Guilds was located under the Clubhouse category, which it used to share with, with Roblox Talk, Off Topic, and Let's Make a Deal. Clan and Guilds was one of the first forums located under the Clubhouse's subheading. The forum section had about 2.5 million threads and 20 million posts. Some common abbreviations for the Clans and Guilds forum include C7G and CNG. In CNG, forumers talked about anything relating to groups. This includes rating, reviewing, voting, and role playing about groups. CNGers also like to discuss the pros and cons of clans, their favorite slash least favorite clans, clan tech, and advertisement for clans. Occasionally, flame wars occurred in CNG. However, about half of the posts were off-topic, which was allowed by CNG's official rules. Assault Mines is a fictional place in CNG, where in forumers below 10,000 posts were forced to work until they reached 10,000 posts. The idea of Assault Mines was originally made by CNG or Squidboy 2. The CNG Council was a discussion group where many CNGers discussed stuff. The group was owned and led by Lusitsuki, along with council members GGGGG14 and disheartening slash pie men 1026. Like the salt mines, there were many other things people made to make CNG fun, including speedo cops, which were people in police uniform top and wearing a speedo as pants, created by a UOP slash board frankly, all nighters. These people usually never go to bed at all and are usually awake every time, every day. Mini mods, these people are not moderators but they like to moderate their subforums and report any inappropriate posts on a subforum. Some of these people could have been forum trolls. There are many controversies that happened in CNG, 
Some of them were really serious, some of them weren't. Little K in PSP John 1 controversy. PPS John 1 posted on CNG that the user Little K2025, who was in PSP John John's Cobra group, had cancer, claimed to have two children, and was going to die on the New Year's Day, which would have been on that next day. As this problem started on the New Year's Eve, about all of the CNG believed that the thread made by P PSP John 1 was a hoax, and Lil K never had cancer, two children, or wasn't going to die. Reason? Because someone with two children would not be playing Roblox, and someone who has cancer wouldn't play Roblox either. Fear of winning the most active group award on, at BloxCon. The reason this became a problem is because CNG believes that fear is terrible, is barely active at all, and was only picked because it is the biggest group on Roblox. Roblox has yet to release an official statement over the controversy. Price floor. This problem started when Roblox admins decided to make a price for on clothing to 300 ticks and 25 Robux. Everyone claims this is because Roblox is greedy. Eventually, Roblox lowered the price floor to 100 ticks and 10 Robux. Tri Clan incidents. During 2014 Tri Clan, a, co a coalition made up of UCR, Fear, and RSF declared war on Sleet Clan and Rat. Even though Tri Clan was defeated, UCR, second in command, CBT Kirk and RSF high rank Flatflow leaked a conversation that CBT Kirk had with rat leader Polymorphic, which ultimately resulted in the end of the Sleet Clan slash Rat Alliance. Polymorphic said that he hated Sleet Clan and that they were being more of a pain to Rat than they were helping. Sleet Clan was furious and declared war while calling a truce with the Tri Clan. Rat miraculously managed to win against all four clans, however, this event was the most talked about thing on the forums in the quarter four of 2014. There have also been incidents where players have tried to get high ranks and leaders banned on purpose. One example being a blog post, an official Roblox admin soon responded to the post as seen here. There were different types of clans, these being super clans. These clans are usually on the first few pages when you search for a group. Some of these clans include Fear, UCR, and Rat. Power clans. These clans are small but very strong, usually undefeated. Some of these clans include the Grand Imperium, the Vakatorian Empire, Void, and RAA. Hype clans. These clans are usually clans that grow up rapidly, but die out fast as well. These clans include Frigid, the Sovereign Dominion, Extinct Hybrid clans. These clans are known to use both guns and swords. These clans include OO, UCR, and TRA. InDev clans. InDev clans are clans that are undergoing development currently. The only notable in-dev clan at the time is Canyon's Strategic Protocol Country Clan. These types of clans are usually named after a real-life country. For example, Night Gallade's IDs, USA, the United States of America, VIP Clan. This kind of clan is for those leaders who were the free VIP method to recruit for their group. Team Domino, VSO, Fear, and Wrath are examples of a VIP clans. PMCs. PMCs, also known as Private Military Co Corporation, are groups that mainly focus in scrimmages, usually with swords or RCL weaponry. Some of these clans include Plasma Spade and Strike Back. No opinion. These groups are usually Roblox airlines or coffee shops. They will kick you out of the group if you say a negative comment towards the group. Some of these include Rainier, TM, and Frappe. In January 12, 2011, collision sounds were added. Physics-based collision sounds are a discontinued Roblox feature. Sounds will be played upon interacting with parts and experiences. For example, if a user falls from a somewhat high place, collision sounds will play. The same will happen for parts touching each other. This feature was silently discontinued. Many players protested the feature's removal. Some believed it made experiences sound quieter. In 2014-2015, collision sounds were removed. Experimental mode was a label placed on experiences that did not have server replication filtering, also known as filtering enabled, or simply FE enabled. This label was to warn players that the experience less secure than experiences that were not in experimental mode. To remove the badge, 
Developers had to turn on filtering enabled property in the experiences workspace. Primarily criticized the changes, primarily due to experiences that had not been updated to work without client server replication were at first completely unplayable to many players and later playable but majority broken. Developers criticized the changes as updating their experiences would require major code changes or complete rewrites to be compatible without client server replication. Roblox justified these changes by focusing on how having client server replication filtering in disabled was a major security flaw which led to criticism from mainstream media outlets about users seeing inappropriate content inserted into experiences without client-server replication filtering, and that client-server replication filtering is standard across most games, websites, and apps and services. Finally, on June 1st, 2021, the filtering-enabled property was completely deprecated, resulting in it being hidden from the properties widget in Roblox Studio, and that it would always return true when read from the Lua API. Before this change, the filtering enabled property could still be toggled on slash off, even though it had no effect outside of custom Lua scripts. Glue was a type of surface that could hold together two parts. The uh, apply button was located in the toolbar near, near the top of Roblox Studio. By using it, a user could have held multiple bricks, parts, constraints, seats, solid models, and more. When a user selected the glue button, the icon would appear as a hand with crosshairs pointing to a yellow brick. When they Select the surface to apply it to, the glue texture would appear. It could have also been applied to surfaces in the properties window of the object which labeled, with labeled surfaces. Glue doesn't hold together. Say for instance a destructive object interferes with the texture. This will tear the bricks apart, leaving the side with glue exposed. In 2015-2016, glue was removed and was replaced with welds. When a user tries to add the glue texture in Roblox Studio, it turns into the weld texture. The bonus round was a page you would receive when signing up on Roblox from 2009 to 2015. Originally in 2009, you were only required to add your email address in the event you got locked out of your account. In 2010, two more options were added. The choice to subscribe to Roblox newsletter was added and the optional referral code. In 2011, the referral code was replaced with typing in a friend's Roblox username. You got the inviter badge if three people entered your username in the referrer section of this page. Even after the badge was made obsolete in 2013, the referrals feature remained on the page until discontinuation. In 2012, the page was updated to be optional, meaning you could skip filling it in. The page went untouched until 2014, when it was edited to remove the newsletter option. In 2015, the bonus round page was removed from sign-up. The image moderator badge was a Roblox badge given the players invited to be image moderators. However, it gets removed if you lose your status as one. Awarded to image moderators, they have the right to approve or disapprove images released by other the users. The badge shows up with a decal when an image, a t-shirt, a pants, and a t-shirt is being reviewed. It displays an image of two pictures of sunshine and hills. The badge was removed in 2014. The inviter badge was a Roblox badge players received when they invited three or more users through email. Like the friendship badge, it is considered a social badge. The inviter badge was retired on October 14th, 2013. It continues to show on players' profiles after its retirement. The moderation history was a feature that listed all account moderations that account has received. It was initially available exclusively to only parent accounts, allowing parents to see the moderation history of their supervised accounts, but later became available for any user to access on the account settings page after parent accounts were removed. Every time an account is moderated, the time and type of moderation action, as well as warnings, reminders, bans, and appeal terminations, and the time it was lifted, are displayed alongside a message from the moderators. The message is usually a generic warning Although well, users may occasionally receive personalized moderation messages, any type of moderation acted upon an account would show up in the moderation history, including violations of terms of service, rules of conduct, and or Roblox forum rules. Moderation history was also used by Roblox to determine eligibility for gifts in the gift explosion events around Christmas, usually related to moderation history. The gifts that involve moderation history require users to not have been moderated during a specified time frame to receive the gift. These include the active gift of chill and the cool gift of nice and busy users. The two rewards from the gifts were the active and chill snowman and winter style scarf and hat respectively. This feature was removed in 2016 and is no longer visible on the settings page. Through moderation, staff are always able to review moderation history. They were used as a badge of honor by users who received many bans and warnings and who subsequently showed off their moderation history on the forums. 
Although this act was against the rules when moderation history was available. Form 34 is a hidden subform that was created for unknown reasons. The official title of the subform was Official Announcements and Rules. Any user who posted on the subform would typically have their thread locked and receive a ban. According to a post on the forum by MFSoccer94, who was a Roblox employee at the time, according to the same post, users were also disallowed to post links to the subform or speak about the subform elsewhere. The only way of accessing Form 34 was by changing the form ID in the URL. It is speculated to have been created by the now former administrator Mr. Doombringer due to his post not being deleted and for being one of few users who were not terminated after posting. Numerous videos were created in 2010 that showed proof of the subform's existence. A number of snapshots of the subform in limited number of its threads were also captured and stored on the Internet Archive through 2009 to 2013. Only one July 2009 archive of the subform's front page was successful at preserving a snapshot of the page in the Internet Archive. All 17 subsequent archiving attempts failed, including 16 failed attempts between April 2011 and August 2011 resulting in page redirects. This may simply imply that the subform thread catalog was rendered completely inaccessible at, at some time between July 2009 and April 2011. However, at least one existing video of the subform's thread catalog in 2010 suggests that it was not closed at any time in 2009. Individual threads were still visible, at least for a time, as demonstrated by snapshots of these having been captured in late this May 2013. Despite several users receiving a permanent deletion when posting, a scarce amount of users managed to evade termination. Currently, the only user known is named is ZeldaFan237. It is also unclear why the users were not terminated. A parent account is a type of account that was intended for parents and could be used to manage and supervise normal user child accounts. It was introduced in November 2008. The Manage Child Accounts section displayed a list of all child accounts currently attached to the parent account, along with an image of their avatar and last seen date. There were also buttons to manage a child account or detach it from the parent account. The Adding New Child Account section allowed parents to attach additional child accounts to their account by entering the child's username and password. Upon attaching a child account, parents would immediately have to select the privacy restrictions, if any, that they would like to enforce on the child account. The Manage Your Account section allowed parents to change the email address or password associated with their parent account. The Parent Link section provided links to various resources regarding child safety online and the terms of service and other legal disclaimers. Parent accounts had the ability to enforce privacy settings and view various details about the child account, such as their friends list, currency, re recent purchases, moderation reports, and more. Parent accounts were later discontinued in May of 2012. Halloween gifts started in 2011 when Roblox decided to start them. For 13 days each year, in October, there is Halloween gifts. In 2012, Roblox made it harder to get gifts by making each gift limited time after they came out. The limited time feature not only made it harder to get gifts, but some people aren't patient enough to wait, so it made the gifts come out early. 2016 was the last year before Roblox stopped making Halloween gifts. The best friend feature was added on July 30th, 2009. Originally, you could set 10 users to be your best friends. When a user was set as a best friend, you could see their status updates via your feed, which was originally on your profile. Sometime later, you could set more users as your best friends and see all your friends in the best friend status updates. On October 16th, 2014, Roblox removed the best friends feature. Best friends were converted into friends while existing friends were converted into followers. Implicit Engine was the name of a physics engine that ran on Roblox during its early stages. Implicit Engine was created by David Uzuki in the programming language C++ in 2004 and allows the accurate simulation of hundreds of rigid bodies, such as cubes, in real life time. It also allows a place to run with any type of geometry. However, the Implicit Engine is quite simplistic and can only calculate collisions for rectangular and spherical objects. This means that Sorleski's attempt at creating custom collisions on meshes would not work unless the engine was modified. This engine was replaced later on. At the time of the removal, Wuji held the most Roblox points with at least 16,265. They were removed by the time the site exited stealth mode in March 2006 for unknown reasons. The top poster feature was an old obtainable reward on the forums. During 
2008 to 2010, popular forumers could earn a mark on their forum posts, saying that they were a top poster. To earn it, you have to be recognized on the forums, aka had to have more than 10k posts and be recognized by the admins slash members. There were also a rumor that you couldn't get your post content deleted on the forums for a year or longer. There were three types of top poster ranks. These were top 25 poster, top 50 poster, top 100 During poster. the year of 2010 to 2011, the system broke. The administrators tried to fix it a bit, but to no avail. After that, the moderators abandoned the feature and said that you had to get it before it broke. The administrators won't repair the system and won't be motivated by emails. The community became a bit angry, but then understood the complication of the system. The community has died down the anger, but is still a bit furious that they are now unable to achieve the top poster line on their posts. Since the forums were closed, nobody has it anymore. The Roblox engine converts high-level Lua code into the lower-level bytecode, a form of instruction set. Before being able to execute code, this process is done every time the engine executes a Lua program, such as a script or a plugin. Previously, both servers and clients were able to load raw Lua bytecodes through the standard Lua library function load string, and is often used for one or two purposes, obfuscating the script's source code to avoid modification, aiding particularly to avoid model copying. Malicious scripts would use flaws in the verification algorithm to perform things that they shouldn't be able to do normally. It is known that popular places such as Wingman's 8 Galleons were left broken due to them using bytecode as the obfuscation method. Galleons were fixed in January 2020. As an example of bytecode and loading of it, considering the following Hello World script source code, which would yield the following bytecode represented as a hex down for readability. This bytecode, before the removal of bytecode mentioned above, could be loaded into a standard rbx.lewis script this way. Roblox stopped supporting the bytecode execution on August 3rd, 2012 for security and version compatibility reasons. The forum moderator badge was a Roblox badge given to forum moderators. Users that used to have this badge were official forum moderators. They had special powers on the Roblox forum and were able to delete and edit threads that violate the community guidelines. This badge is granted by invitation only. The description states, Users who are exemplary citizens on Roblox over a long period of time may be invited. This badge is removed as of the 2014 update, and all players with this badge no longer have it, with the forums closing three years later. The guest data cookie is a browser cookie that assigns a player's in-game name if they are a guest. It will always be negative. The last four digits are common numbers guests have at the end of them, like guest 4182. These numbers are randomly generated every time the guest navigates a site. So it's possible to start off with 4182, click discover, and then have 3486. These numbers used to be saved instead of being randomly generated on every navigation. People were used to being able to change their guest number by editing the cookie using tools such as edit this cookie. Some YouTubers taught players how to change their guest number to thought out numbers such as 0, 666, 1337, etc., in an effort to scare others. Rarely known, but there was a code that could be found from the Roblox website. When you select your gender through guest mode, you can find this code by inspect element. The code was only visible when you enter a game through guest mode. Guest ID equals negative ID of guest, leaving the guest ID a blank will result in random selection from all guest IDs from negative 1 to negative 2, 1, 4, 7, 4, 83647. That number specifically being the 8th Mersine Prime. Some of these from minus 1 to minus 9999 give you the same positive number in the name, while others give different numbers. Place ID equals place you want to join. Gender ID equals the gender of your guest. 1 equals the cap guest, gender neutral. 2 equals male guest, blue hair. 3 equals female guest, pink hair. Nothing equals cap guest gender neutral. When you enter your code into the address bar and press enter, it would load you into a place with a gender ID and guest ID of your choice. Before the guest removal of 2018, adding an infinity sign into the guest ID would result in always joining the game as guest 8. The reason for this is unknown, though it is speculated as because of turning the number 8 90 degrees in either direction looks like an infinity sign. With the removal of guests in October 2017, all methods of becoming a guest would be removed in November 2018. It is no longer possible to use a legitimate and official method to play as a guest. A place where all Roblox scenes can be free. Facebox was a social media website where users could have chats with each other and through a service outside of Roblox. It was the unofficial Roblox counterpart of Facebook. Having a similar design, the site was not monitored for profanity or malicious behavior. 
Facebox was an ideal platform where previously banned or hobbyist users can stray away from the otherwise strict policies enacted on Roblox. Although the website was oriented for users age 13 or older, the site was owned and made by Jared Valdez for Facebox's predecessor was a website called Roblox Uplift, hosted by Ning. It was created in 2009 by Jared Valdez. Users who registered for an account on this website had to have their form reviewed by Site Monitor. By site moderator. In 2012, Jared announced that the website was getting recreated. The site is now no longer active and has been sold. Around September 2013, the website switched networks from Ning to Gru.ps groups. The whole website was reset and was resigned to bear resemblance with Facebook. And at its peak, the website had over 1,800 registered users. Unlike Facebook, the website held a chat for registered users. Users who are online can participate in the chat with other online users. The chat also had the ability to private message other online users. The chat was not moderated and was prone to profanity and obscene topics. The website also hosted a tiny chat room where users can live stream. Groups like Facebook pages were a type of connection on Facebook. Groups could interact with the users as if were a regular friend on the website. They could be created on Facebook without any kind of payment. Users could like and or join them the same way. Along with the other features, users could upload media to face blocks and share blogs and events. Roblox games could be launched from a pop-up that allowed easier navigation while they browse. In June 2014, face blocks was shut down. The website redirected to the group's website, stating that the website was abandoned. In September 2014, the website redirected to Jared Valdez's website, where it announced Facebook's closure and revealed the reasons as to why. The announcement revealed information that users previously did not know about, stating that Jared's account was terminated for not complying with Roblox's demands to close the site. Along with the complications that came from switching networks, after its closure from Roblox scenes, after its closure, some Roblox scenes went over to suggestions and ideas to express their thoughts to on the closure. The website was updated to say that Facebook could possibly make a return, however, Jared's website was eventually shut down as well. After Facebook was shut down, news sites were created to succeed the former website. However, these sites were short-lived. One website possibly derived from the original Facebook is a Weebly website by Chad Verling. It looks fairly simple compared to the old website and it was opened on March 8, 2013. In 2015, Facebook's Facebook page announced a possible comeback. Since then, no further posts have been made about it and nothing has come of it. As of 2017, the Facebook domain redirected to Roblox's website. The domain is currently under ownership by the Roblox Corporation. Contests were first released sometime in mid-2005. They are competitions that users enter to compete for prizes. The original contests began in mid-2005, as seen on the Wayback Machine, and do not happen very much at all now. The original contest would be put on Roblox's blog pages. The host was one of the people from the staff. The original contest would be put on Roblox's blog pages. The host was one of the people from the staff. The prizes were also hard to get, such as video contests. The first contest started on June 17, 2005. It was named Fend Off the Bots, in which you'd have to build something to stop robots from catching you. More contests continued on over the months, such as Steer the Spears 1 and 2 and Balance. 2010 to 2011 was when contests were really popular, with over 50 mm -hmm. made during that time period. Contests were sometimes criticized when users won a contest with a place had little to nothing to do with the overall theme. On the prizes page, it shows the prizes. It will have the prizes for the highest rated places and sometimes prizes for the most accurate voters. After 2013, contests became very far, few, and in between, with only a couple taking place in the years since. The last contest Roblox held was with the Roblox developer Dream Jam. As of November 2023, there hasn't been a contest since 2022. M.Roblox.com used to be a variant of the Roblox website that was shut down. It was a mobile version of the Roblox site. The website was created on August 26, 2012. Later on, the website would heavily encourage you to download the Roblox mobile app and also had an option to go to the full site. There was many mobile exclusive items you could get for free on the mobile Roblox site, although they were exclusive to mobile devices and you couldn't get them on PC, Xbox One, Mac, VR, etc. Many of these items included the Jacko Mask and the Medieval Hood of Mystery. Although there was a trick PC users did to get the mobile exclusive items for free on PC, this trick only worked on Google Chrome. 
users could copy the number of mobile exclusive item on the PC site and then go to the mobile site, then go to the catalog and click on a random feature item, then go to the buy now button and right click and right click on inspect element. Then users would replace that item's number with the mobile exclusive items number and press enter to purchase it for free on PC. This most likely caused Roblox to fix this patch by shutting down the m.roblox.com site. This also might be why Roblox hasn't released any mobile exclusive items anymore. This variant of the website cannot browse the games page or look through the library, though it can browse the avatar shop, which has been considered to be strange because the library and the catalog were very similar before the new catalog client. This was possibly a choice made by admins to keep the website smooth. The website was replaced with the main Roblox website, which is now compatible with mobile and users can open games on if it. If they have the main mobile site. The website was shut down on January 24th, 2017.